Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to worship today. It is good to be gathered together to worship our Lord and Savior today. And maybe lift up a few extra prayers before kickoff at 6.30, right? We'll see how that goes tonight. Uh, several announcements for you before we begin our service together. Uh, next Sunday, October 17th from 9 till 11, we are hosting a flu shot clinic uh, here in the fellowship hall. Uh, so you can sign up by contacting Patty in the church office. Uh, she will make those appointments. So it is that time of year again. Also, Trunk or Treat is happening this year. We're really excited that Sunday, October 24th, from 2 until 3.30, we will be going over to King Elementary School at about 37th and Maple and being able to dress up in our costumes, dress up our cars and vehicles, and make a trick-or-treating or trunk-or-treating uh, opportunity available for the youth of that community. So really excited to do that. If it's something you would like to participate in, please uh, sign up on the sign-up sheet over in the uh, commons there at the corner of the fellowship hall or go on our church website and the sign-up is there as well. Also, the Youth Bell Choir is looking for additional members. Anybody from third grade up, if you're interested in learning more and getting involved, uh, please contact Amy Monzingo or the church office. And I've been assured that even if you have no prior bell experience, Amy can teach you how to play bells. She's pretty confident in that, so uh, please, uh, if that's something that's on your hearts, please do that. And I invite you then also to please uh, peruse uh, the rest of the worship folder uh, for other announcements of things that are happening here at church as things, again, have opened up and it's exciting. There's so much going on, but I'm not going to sit up here and just announce every one of those, so I invite you to take time to look through there as well. And also for any guests or visitors that are with us this day, I would ask that you would uh, take a moment to fill out the blue tab guest card in the pew rack in front of you and drop it in the offering plate on your way out as a way we can say thank you for worshiping with us here at Rejoice and answer any questions you may have about our community. That is all I have for announcements right now. I invite you to stand as we begin our time together with a moment of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the fifth chapter from the prophet Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many of your, are your transgressions and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said, hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 90 responsively. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Our second reading is from the fourth chapter of Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joint from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart, and before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. 
When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our loving Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I know Pastor Brad said last week he wished we could have drawn straws on the text from which he was so fortunate to get to preach on, you know, the, the divorce text, and what do you do with that? I wouldn't have mind drawing straws for this one either, quite honestly. I mean, this whole thing, go sell what you own, give it away, and then come follow me, Jesus says. That's, that's, that's an interesting text. It's a bit of a challenging text, but it is one that has caused me to look at it differently, to look at it with new eyes. It is a text that somewhat fits into the realm, if you've heard the saying, let go and let God. Letting go. Not always something that I've really been good at. I've always, you know, I kind of grew up in, in a time where, you know, hold on to something because you never know when you're going to need it again. You know, waste not, want not. So every nook and cranny that I might have where I could store something, I probably have it. And it's so much so, it was a while back, I was cleaning out my garage. Eh, I was going through my garage. I'm not so sure I was cleaning it. I found a heating element for a clothes dryer. I don't even have that clothes dryer anymore. I found wheel bearings for vehicles that I don't have anymore. They don't fit anything I own. And it was still hard to throw them away. <laughs> I was holding on to them because you never know when you're going to want it, right? We, we tend to hold on to things. We tend to keep them close to us. If it brings security for me, I'm not sure what it is, but it was ingrained. I want to hold on to this because it's something I have, and you never know when I might need it have to learn to let go sometimes. Never been more evident than just uh, this past week. Our daughter moved back home again. I was getting pretty used to being an empty nester for a while, but she moved back home, and she had a whole apartment full of furnishings. Dad, where are we going to put this? Where are we going to put X, Y, and Z? I'm like, I... I don't know. We don't have enough room for two households worth of stuff. There were some things we had to let go. Let them get purposed for something else. This text here today talks about letting go. I think we have to let go of certain things. We have to let go of ego. We have to let go of assumptions. We have to let go of false securities. And, and so we had, this, we had this man, and he came running up to Jesus, and, and everything was so urgent, right? He came running up to Jesus. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do?
and that struck me as a very egocentric question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? How often do we, do we think that, that we have enough control, that we have enough say, but in this text, it's about one person? What must I do? What about everybody else was where my mind went. What about the greater humanity? What about everybody else? But what must I do? Any of us thinks we can do this on our own? We're going to get to that a little bit later because that's a theological question, but it's not a very communal question to be asked in the first place. And then Jesus went right to the Ten Commandments, at least the, you know, the backside of them, right? Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, da-da-da-da-da. And he said, teacher, I have done all that. Ever since I was a youth, I've kept everything. <sighs> wow. I wish I could say that. But he was so self-confident in himself. I have lived a good life. I've lived a good and righteous life. What else do I need to do? Jesus says, go sell all your possessions, give them to the poor, and come follow me. And that made him sad. He walked away sad because he had many possessions. But did you hear what wasn't necessarily said in that? Jesus had to tell him that it's not so much about your desire for eternal life, but it's more about what are you going to do in this life now? What are you going to do for the sake of others? What began as a very egocentric question, what must I do? And the response was, go and help others that are less fortunate than yourselves. Go and help others. Use the gifts that you've been given to go help other people now. It's a kingdom now answer. It really didn't address what the guy initially was asking, but it addressed, again, as Jesus reshapes the question and refocuses the answer, what I want you to focus on, he said, is take what you've been entrusted with and help other people now. Then you can come follow me. In other words, in a certain respect, have you ever heard the saying, it's not about you? Boy, sometimes that's a hard one to be told. Guess what? The world doesn't just revolve around us, right? It's not about me. It's about how we live together as the body of Christ. How do we take the things that we have been entrusted with and use them for the sake of others? Are we able to let go? So often we're like, but I've worked really hard for X, Y, and Z. This is mine. It's mine. I'm going to cling on to it. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to own it. But the reality is we are stewards. We are caretakers of that which God has made possible for us. And we are to take what has been entrusted to us and use it for the betterment of others. We have to learn to let go. And let God grow that and use that which has been entrusted to us. Let go and let God. I mean, especially even like this time of year, this time of year, I think nature even, even teaches us a lesson. Look at the trees. Is they're already beginning to change colors? Their leaves are starting to change colors. Some of them are starting to fall. I'm going to have to clean out my gutters again and again. And I'm like, oh, really, does this happen? But every year, the trees even let go of their leaves because they know in the spring they're going to come back and they're going to bloom again. They're going to blossom again. It's the way God works. It's a cycle. Everything we have is to be looking forward. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I love this part. Jesus looked at him and loved him. Jesus looked at him and loved him. He didn't judge the man for his question. He first loved him. And then responded in the most loving way he knew how. He spoke 
the truth in love. We're told, scripture tells us to do that. Are we able to do this with one another? Are we able to interact with one another and not look at somebody and judge and critique, but are we able to love them and speak the truth in love? Even if the truth is sometimes difficult to hear, maybe I don't want to hear that message, it's not all about me. What do you mean it's not? No, it's not. There's a greater reality. There's a greater something out there. There's something you need to be doing that is different. But Jesus loved him. I think that would go so far in this world, in this society, if we looked at every person we saw and if we could respond like Jesus and love them. See everybody as a human being. We're not objects. We're not on we, we, we might not think the same. We might not agree on the same. Uh, we might not agree on the same politics. We might not agree on uh, which team we're cheering for. I mean, you you go all over the place. We we we're not supposed to agree on everything. But can we agree that we are all children of God, regardless of our preferences, regardless of our skin color, regardless of our races, regardless. Of, Everything else aside, when we get down to the bare bones of who we are as people, we are one shared humanity. We are children of God, and can we look at one another with love? And before we speak and before we act, can we continually ask ourselves, what is the most loving thing I can do in this moment? And when that becomes our guide, our interactions will be much more fruitful. We won't just be thinking about ourselves, what must I do, but more so, how can I be a better person for other people? How can I help make this world a better place? Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, go and sell what you own. Give the money to the poor, and then come and follow me. This is not just a text about money. It's not just a text about wealth, even though that's what it speaks of. But I believe Jesus is also telling, get rid of that which burdens you. Get rid of that which would try to hold you back. Unload it and come and follow me. What are some of the things that maybe we put too much trust in? What are some of the things that we have our false securities in? Is it in our own self and our own abilities? Is it in wealth? Is it in possessions? Is it in our appearance and the way others see us? What are the things that we need to unload? Maybe they're things that are very unhealthy. I have to own one, and it's been an interesting journey for me throughout my life. I've always struggled with weight issues. And I still remember all the names that used to be spoken to me when I was a younger person. It sticks with me, and how do I let go of that and move forward? So I'm not anchored down, but I let go of that and leave it behind and trust that that is not the truth, but the truth comes from Jesus who looks at us and says, I love you. Follow me. You are a beloved child of God. We're going to hear that today as we gather around the baptismal font and say, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit to mark with the cross of Christ forever. That is our identity as children of God, and we are called to let go of that which would hold us down and hold us back. And we're called to go and live boldly, to love freely, to give of ourselves extravagantly, because God will continue to take care of us again and again and again. Because the things that we so often cling to are just that. They're things and they're stuff. When what we need to cling to is the promise of God given to us in Jesus Christ who has come and said, I have come that all may have life and have it abundantly. 
that all, not that some, but that all may have life and have it abundantly. That is good news. And you know how that happens? Because there's other good news in this text. That young man came up to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There's nothing he could do. Nothing. We even read later in the text, for mortals it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. But to get an inheritance, what has to happen? Somebody has to die. I always thought that was interesting, the story of the prodigal son, when we go back, when the younger son goes up to his dad, demanding half his inheritance, his half, right then before he leaves. He essentially told his dad, I wish you were dead. Because it's only when someone dies do you receive the inheritance. You didn't earn that. You don't even necessarily deserve it. But when someone dies, they may hand down an inheritance. And in this case, we are so fortunate that Christ died for us so that we may inherit eternal life. Not because we earned it, not because we deserve it. For by grace, we have been saved through faith. This is not our own doing, rather it's a gift of God. So that we may do good works, which have been prepared beforehand to be our way of life. That's the good news. That's what happens when we let go and let God in Jesus' name. Amen.
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So I ask, who presents this child for baptism? Parents, as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say we do. we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say we do. We do. People of God gathered here today, do you promise to support this child and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, say we do. Let us then confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here, let's try to drain that off of that up for you. There you go. Boy, you can't hold that. Can't hold on to that. Let us now join in our baptismal hymn. give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Lila with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. I, the child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever.
go back to you. And may your light so shine before others as they see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this child a new member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And now we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. And let us now give Lila a proper rejoice welcome this evening. Yeah. You can blow out the candle, return to your seats. Thank you. We will continue our worship service with the prayers of intercession. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Uniting God, you call forth different gifts in those who follow you. Encourage us to welcome the diverse benefits and blessings of the whole church in teaching, preaching, prophecy, healing, and more. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide for good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show such compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Sheltering God, in Jesus, you traveled among us without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, this day we offer you the prayers of our hearts. We lift up before you today Dorothy Wright as she grieves the death of her brother. May the hope and promise found in the resurrection give her the strength for this day and the days ahead. We ask that you search our hearts and our minds. Receive the prayers that we hold within us, even the prayers that we cannot put to words. Receive these prayers through your spirit and remember your will be done. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. Make us confident in your promise of salvation and support us in our own journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see the Lord is good. You may be seated, for all is ready.
I invite you to stand. O oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.